And then along comes a writer, uh, Eusebius, a Caesarean, the third century, and he says this, the Christians were the only people who amid such terrible ills showed their fellow feeling and humanity by their actions. Day by day, some would busy themselves with attending the dead and burying them. Others gathered in one spot, all who were afflicted by hunger throughout the whole city and gave bread to all. And when this became known, the people glorified the Christian God. It costs money to provide bread to the poor of a whole city. That's really, really expensive. And it takes great risk and courage to nurse and bury the infected dead because you risked your own life in doing that. So perhaps one of the reasons why the early church exploded was because they actually took at face value this incredible concept of generosity. And they lived it out. Anyway, that's enough about the past. How are we doing? Let's get to the fun bit. This is the good bit. So I thought, you know, how do I work out what we're doing? Well, one of the sources, surely, is the National Church Life Survey. So I went on to Dr. Google, and, uh, and sure enough, uh, very quickly, you'll find a, a two-page PDF download which talks about the giving in Australian Protestant churches. Do you want the figures? They're really good. Here they are. Uh, let me quote from the NCLS. In terms of dollar value in Australian Protestant churches, in terms of dollar value, 27%, nearly a third of all attenders, give $5 a week or less. How do you give less than $5? You have to carry a chunk, I don't even do that. It actually be quite difficult to give less anything for it to be less than $5, I think. But there we go. A third of all attenders give $5 a week or less. Over half, 53%, give between $6 to $40 a week. That's 75% of all attenders of Protestant churches in Australia on a weekly basis give less than $40 a week. Now, there are some people in that. I looked up the pension in Australia and it's only just over $400 a week, 800 and something bucks a fortnight for a basic age pension. So for a pension of $40 a week, it would be a 10% tie. That would be sacrificial giving, I think. But across the whole of the Australian church, all of us, 75% of us give less than 40 bucks a week. Only 20% give more than $40 per week. Oh my goodness, we're just not getting it. And it's not about let's send more missionaries and let's build better churches. It's about what's our relationship with God. Is he indeed the one whom we are the disciples of? So I thought I'd do a little bit of a, a play. Now, I always have this constant battle with musicians. I, I know I'm doing it, so I'm going to do it again. So just take over the stage. Take the stage as there is. Nice thing is that they get off the microphone themselves so I can make things wherever I like. Let's come over here. <coughs> Anyone know what this is? If it wasn't here this morning, we did the sneak peek. Had some guesses this morning. One was that under this cover is a piano. Another one was that it's actually a post from <laughs> Any guesses tonight? Sorry? Gold bullion. God, <laughs> man. Well, the table, let me tell you, is bowing under the weight, but it's not gold bullion. You wouldn't guess it in a hundred years. That's all. <laughs> there are 100 button up pumpkins on that bench. I know there's a hundred because I count. I did have the idea of putting them all in one big row, and I discovered that butternut pumpkins are not built to be stacked. <laughs> so there's three rows, in fact, four rows deep, so you can't actually see them all, which takes away a bit of the visual impact, but that's the life I tried it and tried it, and I just got to see them them up off the floor. So they're precariously balanced as it is. So there's a hundred of them, because I'm not very good at math, and we've got to keep it easy, okay? So the 100 represent 100% of your income. That might be just pocket money, it's 100% of it. You might be a big salary, it's 100% of it, okay? So if we take the Old Testament basic principle approach, 
then we would say that God asks us to give 10% of our income. Can someone please do the math for me? What is that? Ten. Oh, thank you. I wasn't sure. I, I always have to check that. I'm not very good at it. That's uh, 25, 6, 7. is just what a greedy God we have in the Old Testament, okay? This, it gives it all to us, by the way. Do any of you know how to grow a butternut pumpkin? <laughs> you put it out in the dirt and you ask God to do it for you, don't you? So he gives us everything. And have everything that he's given us, he says, keep charge under this principle of 90%. You wisely, <laughs> but live off 90%. But make sure you set aside 10% for the kingdom of God and his work. What a really unreasonable God we serve. I mean, seriously, this is all we get? Yeah, that's not a big deal, is it? Not when you look at it. But the thing is, this is not the situation in our Australian <coughs> Protestant churches. Because we Christians in Protestant churches in this country go... Yeah, no, I'm sorry, God, that's, I can't live on that. Really? I mean, have you seen the price of houses? Seriously, have you seen the price of houses in this area? Goodness me. Petrol. There's also petrol. And I've got to buy a car. That's another loan I've got to take out, God. You need to understand that. So here we are. This is the scene in the Australian church. Actually, I wish it was, but it's not. So yeah. let's keep going. So the figure for the average giving across our Protestant churches here in Australia. Four pumpkins? Oh, you wish. Don't you? You're, you're really wishing it was four pumpkins at this stage, wasn't it? But no, let's put another one back because we've got to go to the movies occasionally. So now it's looking more reasonable, isn't it? Not really. Tell you what, God, let's break one and a half. I need another half. That's it. Here we are, people. This is us. We're all pretty good for ourselves, aren't we? In one of the richest countries of the world. Two and a half percent. That's the good givers averaged with the bad givers. That's as good as it gets. You feeling good? You're feeling proud of ourselves? Because you might be looking at this visually for the first time, but this is what God looks at every single week in Australia. And then we sing our songs of victory. And we pray our prayers and we say, God, be mighty in our lives. Sweep through our nation. Bring revival. And Lord, here's our offering. Here's our commitment to your kingdom. I'm doing this because I want you to feel bad. I'm doing this because I want you to know you're missing out. If you're in this category, or anything other than the ultra generous category, you're missing out. By the way, um, this morning I was feeling pretty good about this illustration. A little thing happened. I shared that, uh, you know, despite that difficulty with my struggles with money. Some years ago, my wife and I passed the 10% giving mark, and we've left that behind. And I was feeling pretty good about it. I'm glad I could stand up here and be honest and say that, that we give more than 10% of our income. At the 8 o'clock service this morning, a little old lady, an aged pensioner, walked up to me, and she was actually trying to encourage me. She said, great sermon. She said, I want to let you know that for many years now, I've been giving 30% of my income. And my testimony is, God never lacks, has never let me lack for anything. And so I still give 30% of my income. I'm going to tell you, I don't give 30% of my income. 
And I earn a lot more than she does. It was like God went, really? You think you're there, Phil? We've all got to work for her on this journey. And why do we want to do it? I want to take you to the next chapter. The next chapter, because Paul just keeps on going for two chapters about giving in 2 Corinthians. Go ahead and read it for yourself. But let me just give you some verses from the next chapter in chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse 6. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. God, bless our nation. Really? Do we dare to ask that? <coughs> but here's where we need to go. Here's where we need to get to. And by the way, um, just a, a week ago, I was sitting with a pastor friend of mine. And we're having a conversation about another pastor friend of ours who's going through a bit of a rough patch. And uh, a bit depressed, a bit dry spiritually. It happens to pastors just as much as anyone else. I'm not sure. We don't have any special mortgage on being religious and wonderful or anything like that. <coughs> uh, and, uh, and he was saying, I was meeting with so-and-so, and, and I, I just asked him, I said, are, are you reading the Word of God? Are you, are you in the Word? And he said, oh, I've got to admit, it's been a long time since I've read the Bible regularly. And, he, and my friend said, I just encouraged him, he's got to start reading the Bible again. And I sat there and went, yeah, I totally agree with that. But I've got another question for him. If I'd been on that name, what do you think my question would have been? Anyone want to guess? How's your giving go? Where's your generosity? Where's your joy in supporting the kingdom of God? Because whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously, this is where we need to go. Let's put the depressive stuff behind us. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that God prospers and blesses. I'm not talking prosperity, doctor. I'm not saying that God reduces the gospel to just making us financially rich. That's just a, a heresy. It's a blasphemy. But this is a genuine promise for God. Listen to it. I just want to read Paul again. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. <laughs> Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. That is a promise of God. And that little old lady this morning said, I'm giving away 30% of my income and my testimony is I've never wanted for anything. <clears throat> Who'd have thought? God meant it. Guys, we've got to get in that space. If your life just lacks the, the, the zeal and the, the, the zing and the, the excitement of the kingdom of God and being a part of it, then let me ask you those two questions. Are you reading the word regularly and how's your giving? Don't come back next week and think number three will fix it if we haven't got those two right. If we are calling ourselves disciples of Jesus, let's start being disciples. Now, let me give you a practical way to do that. Go home and get your calculator out. Look at what you're giving and going, man, I'm the person Phil was talking about tonight. I give 2.5% of my income. Don't get depressed about it, but work out what 1% more is. Say, so, okay, God, that's what I'm giving this month. And test God, see if you go hungry. And then if you don't, then maybe the next month you can go, all right, Lord, my faith's increased. I'm going to give you another 2%. And see if you go on. I don't know where you stop. The Bible says work it out between you and God. But it's fun. It's a challenge. 
and it will bring your spiritual walk with God alive, you'll suddenly be interested in the missionaries you supported. You'll be vitally involved in the church that you're a part of. And uh, it will just go on and on as God blesses your life. I encourage you to do it in every possible, imaginable way. This is the example to end all examples. There is one who loved us so much that he was not sensible. He was not conservative. He was not measured. He was just extravagant. He just poured out his own blood on our behalf. He gave his everything, even his body and his blood. This is the one who says, come follow me. I'm also glad of this for another reason. Because, you know, maybe, like me, you've been struggling with what you're giving is, and it's not yet come to a, a comfortable place, or, or a place where you feel that you're on a journey, at least, toward where it should be. And, and maybe tonight made you feel, oh, I'm not good enough, or, oh, I failed. And that's not the message. This is the message. The message is that God knows we fail, that God knows we're not good enough, that God knows we often are thick and slow to understand and don't rise to the challenge. And he just loves us anyway, because he's that extravagant. And so we simply need to come to God and say, oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I love you. Tomorrow is another day. Let's walk on together. Teach me more. And that's it. You're restored. You're perfect in God's sight. And we are able to take of this body and blood, this, these emblems of, of Jesus' body and blood, and, and we're able to celebrate it without guilt. Even if you've never given a cent, without guilt. Because that's how extravagant our God is, and how reserved our God is in his love. So, I'm going to pray, and I'm just going to ask the stewards to come and distribute the so let's just sit there and let's just rejoice as we take them that we have a God who doesn't need us to get it right. We've just got a God who needs us to depend on Him. Let's pray. Father, forgive us for all our shortcomings and all our failures. We pray. Oh God, we, we want to do better. Walk with us tomorrow. We, we want tomorrow to be better than yesterday. But Father, thank you that right now, through the work of Jesus, we are blameless in your sight. And that we can take of this supper together with full confidence and joy in our lives, knowing that our God loves us and sees us as redeemed, sees us with the righteousness of Jesus. Thank you, God. We accept this work, this extravagant gift, on our behalf once again. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>